Hi, uh, my name is Randy Rosier and I, I'm a professor of orthopedic surgery at the University of Rochester. Osteoarthritis is a, a disease that is associated with aging and it is uh, where the cartilage, which is the smooth gliding surface of the joint, gradually wears out or wears away. Some people are more prone to it than others. There may be genetic factors that influence it. Other things that influence it can be injuries to joints uh, that can predispose someone to get arthritis where the cartilage wears out prematurely and the surface becomes rough and eventually the cartilage wears away till it's uh, bone rubbing on bone and obviously even early on it can be quite a painful and disabling problem that can prevent people from using their extremities or being able to walk. The prevalence of the disease is very high and it's going up very rapidly. So there are tens of millions of people who have this now. And the incidence of it goes up exponentially with age. So as you get into your 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, a very high percentage of the population will develop this in one or more joints. Right now, therapy is focused on trying to minimize the symptoms. Uh, we can't cure medically the disease. In fact, there aren't even uh, for osteoarthritis, this wear and tear age-related arthritis. There aren't even disease-modifying therapies that have been demonstrated to be successful right now. There is a fix for this, but it's drastic, and that is uh, that we orthopedic surgeons take the joint out and replace it with metal and plastic parts. It's actually a very successful operation and restores mobility, eliminates pain, and it's really a, 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 an excellent operation, but it's expensive, it's very involved, there are medical risks to it, particularly in the aging population, and also there are problems that can develop with time uh, in joint replacements. They can come loose over time and then they have to be redone. The results are never as good after they're redone. What initially sparked our interest was uh, in a pathology conference looking at some cartilage from an arthritic patient that was removed for a joint replacement, one of my colleagues that I uh, have done research with over the years observed that there was expression of this receptor for parathyroid hormone in the arthritic cartilage. And when we looked at normal cartilage, we didn't find that to be the case. And we uh, thought that maybe this is an attempt of the body at trying to repair itself by expressing this receptor that could receive signals from this hormone and its effect on cartilage cells is to make them multiply and to create matrix, synthesize matrix. So it might be a way cartilage tries at least to repair itself. And then we made these anecdotal patient observations along the way concurrently. But it uh, uh, stimulated us to want to study uh, this process in an animal model. and. Uh, it caused actually regrowth and regeneration of some of the lost cartilage. You know, we we're trying to approach this from a point of view of developing a practical treatment for people. Now, this parathyroid hormone is an injectable drug. In fact, sometimes we have a hard time convincing patients who have osteoporosis to take it because they want to, would rather take an oral drug. There are no oral drugs that have the same effect that we're aware of. So. Uh, you know, the notion that over a 20 or 30 year period, you would have to inject yourself every day to try to prevent arthritis, you know, it's not practical, it's expensive, and you would not have it very uh, acceptable to patients. Uh, our concept was, once we discovered this, what we call a chondro-regenerative effect, where it regenerates cartilage, suddenly this becomes a much more practical approach in humans because you could take someone who has very symptomatic arthritis, treat them for a few months to regenerate the arthritis, ameliorate the symptoms, and maybe they'd get by for a few years and you could do it again. And you might be able to do several cycles of this over a period of a number of years where you might be able to avoid having to do these major uh, knee and hip replacement surgeries. We have done one exploratory study. There's, a, there's an ongoing uh, analysis of osteoarthritis patients in the knee. It's a huge cadre of 4,000 patients that are being followed by a number of institutions to follow the natural history of their osteoarthritis in the knee and make all sorts of measurements on them. Well, that is an NIH-funded initiative uh, nationally, and the data from it is accessible to anyone, to any scientist. So we looked at, the, we did some data mining on this osteoarthritis initiative, it's called. 
on the data from that. And uh, we found that during the course of when patients were being followed, which was like four or five year period of time, some of them, again, being older patients, will overlap with a population that has osteoporosis. So there were a number of patients who were put on Forteo during the period of time they were being followed up in this osteoarthritis initiative. We're still analyzing some of that data. We're not finished with that. But what we did observe is we found about 20 patients who went on this drug. And we found that, uh, in particular, a functional score that they do called a WOMAX score. Uh, there was a statistically significant improvement in the WOMAX scores in the patients who went on Forteo as compared to a large group of patients who didn't go on it who were being followed in the same study. Now, as interesting as that is, it's a really small number of patients. So, you know, it, it's, it's one more piece of information that is encouraging, but it's not a proof that this is effective in humans. So that's the next step we want to get to is to do a <clears throat> a uh, properly controlled clinical trial to try to prove that this alters uh, the disease in, in human subjects. And uh, then maybe it can go forward as a, as a potential treatment. And, and it will be the first disease-modifying treatment in our armamentarium of things we can use uh, for patients with this really common and really disabling uh, disease.